Hello everyone. Welcome to Theory of Programming. Graph theory has many real world applications and in this video I'm going to explain how we can apply breadth first search algorithm to find the shortest path to win a given snakes and ladders problem. So let's start by defining our problem statement. The problem is that you're given a configuration of a snakes and ladders game board and you need to find the shortest path to finish the game. It is actually pretty simple to do this. We will do this in two simple steps. Firstly, we will represent this given configuration of snakes and ladders in the form of a graph. That is, we are going to represent this snakes and ladders game board in the form of a bunch of edges and vertices. In the second step, we simply run BFS on this graph. If you are not familiar with breadth first search algorithm, I recommend you to watch my video on breadth first search. I will leave a link in the description below. So how do we represent this in the form of a graph? Well, each block you can stand on will be a vertex. So each block from 1 to 100 is a vertex in the graph. And each possible move you can make is an edge. So if you consider this figure below, let's say you're at block number one. What are the possible moves you can make? You can make six possible moves depending on the outcome of your dice roll. If the outcome of the dice roll is one, you move to block two. If the outcome is two, you move to block three and so on. So you have six possible moves you can make from block one. So you have six edges coming out of block one. Similarly, you would have six edges coming out of block two, six edges coming out of block three and so on. I want you to note that you would have only one edge coming out of block 99. This is because there's only one possible move you can make from block 99, which is when your dice roll outcome is one, you move from block 99 to block 100. So block 99 will have one possible move, which means it'll have one edge and block 98 will have two edges. Block 97 will have three edges and so on. So now that we have a basic definition of our graph, we can rephrase our initial problem statement. Our initial problem statement was find the shortest path to finish the game. Now we can rephrase it to find the shortest path from vertex one to vertex 100. Because I always start my game at vertex one and I consider my game to be finished when I reach vertex 100. And as you can see, this graph is an unweighted graph which means when I apply BFS on this graph, it will give me the shortest distance between any two vertices. So now that we have our basic graph set up, we need to modify it based on the snakes and ladders. Consider this ladder from four to 14. And let's say I'm at block number one. Normally, if my dice roll outcome is three, I would go to the vertex four. But now I see that there's a ladder which takes me from vertex four to 14. So in reality, this edge, which represents the outcome of dice roll three should actually point to the vertex 14. And similarly, there would be an edge from vertex two, which represents the outcome of dice roll equals to two. That would also point to vertex 14. So if you think about this, all the possible outcomes which lead to vertex four should now be leading to vertex 14. That sounds like we can replace the vertex four with vertex 14 in the entire graph. And if you think about it, it makes sense because it is impossible to be at vertex four at the end of your turn because being at vertex four is the same as being at vertex 14. To understand what I just said, let us shift our perspective to a coding point of view. This is how our linked list would look like if there were no ladders or snakes. The simplest case. As you can see, there are six nodes in the linked list associated with each vertex, which represent the six possible moves you can make from a given vertex. If you're wondering why the linked list is in a descending order fashion, it is due to head insertion. Let's say you were at vertex one and you realize that the list of your possible moves are going to vertex two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Now, if you try to insert two, three, four, five, six, seven into a linked list, which follows head insertion, then this is how your link list would look like. Now let us make the ladders modification. This is how a link list would look like after the ladder adjustment. As I stated before, all the moves leading to vertex four should be replaced with vertex 14. So 
we have replaced these vertices with vertex 14. Now I want you to understand that you could run a loop from vertex 1 to vertex 100 and trying to look for vertex 4 if it is present in the linked list and try to replace it with vertex 14. But if you think about it, vertex 4 will only be in the linked list for the 6 preceding vertices to vertex 4. In this case, it happens to be just vertex 1, 2 and 3. But let's say there was a ladder from vertex 10, then you would find the entry 10 only in the 6 vertices preceding vertex 10. And as I stated before, it is impossible to stay at vertex 4 at the end of a turn. So we should be discarding all the possible moves from vertex 4 because they assume that you can come to vertex 4. So as a result, this linked list is empty. The same adjustment needs to be made in the case of a snake. Consider this snake which takes you from vertex 17 to vertex 7. And let's say you were at the block 14. Now you're trying to look at your list of possible outcomes. Initially, you would see that the edge representing the dice outcome 3 would point to vertex 17. But later you realize that there's a snake at 17 which takes you to 7. So this edge would actually be pointing to vertex 7. So all the possible moves which lead to vertex 17 should now be replaced with vertex 7. And we will empty the linked list corresponding to vertex 17 because it is impossible to stay at vertex 17 at the end of your turn. Now let us look at this example from a coding perspective. This is how our adjacency list would look like after the snake adjustment. As you can see, we have replaced 17 with 7. Please note that this adjacency list is not complete. You would have to replace 17 with 7 in all the 6 nodes preceding vertex 17. And lastly, we empty the linked list corresponding to vertex 17. So now what do we do after this? It is simple. We apply BFS on our modified graph. This would give us the shortest distance, shortest path from vertex 1 to vertex 100. Normally, I'd show you pseudocode, but in this case, I think it's better if we just jump into the code directly. And trust me, it is very simple. So I have the code for snakes and ladders demo open here. All my codes are available on my GitHub. I will leave a link in the description below. So let's jump to the main method. This code is just a modification of my BFS code. I will leave a link in the description below for this as well. So coming to the main method, I create an adjacency list of size 100 and then I populate each vertex with 6 possible moves. These would be the regular moves considering there were no snakes or ladders. And then I scan the number of ladders and then I scan the information of each ladder. I scan two integers v1 and v2 which represent the ladder which takes me from v1 to v2. And then I call this method replace edge for six preceding vertices, which will do the replacement for me. So I am passing the adjacency list, the start vertex as v1. So what this parameter does is it will take six vertices preceding v1. So this is my start vertex parameter. And then I am replacing v1 with v2. So these are the parameters old edge and new edge. So let's take a look at this method, replace edge for six preceding vertices. I pass my adjacency list as a reference because I will be modifying it. And then this is just as expected. I look at six vertices preceding the start vertex and then I replace old edge with new edge. Then coming back to our main method, I do the same thing for snakes. I scan the number of snakes and then I scan the information v1, v2 for each snake which signifies a snake which takes me from v1 to v2 and then I do a similar replacement. Then I am printing my adjacency list just to look that I got everything correctly. And then this is my regular BFS stuff where I create the parent and level arrays and initialize them. Then I am simply calling breadfirst search on my modified adjacency list passing the parent and level arrays and passing one as the start vertex. Once this is done, my level array would have the shortest distance from the start vertex to each vertex. So if I wanted to know the minimum number of moves required to finish the game, I would simply print the level of 100, which is essentially the shortest distance from vertex 1 to vertex 100. 
and then I print my path from vertex 1 to vertex 100. So let's run this code. I have it open in IDEON and I've given it an input. Let's see how this goes. So as you can see, I've given it two ladders from 3 to 54 and 37 to 100. So every entry with 3 should be replaced with 54. And you can see that these entries which were actually 3 are replaced by 54. And 37 would be replaced with 100. So if I go down, I can see 100s here, which were initially 37s. So this tells me that the minimum number of moves required to finish the game is 3. Okay, what are they? I have to go from 1 to 54. Now you might think that's odd going from 1 to 54, but actually we have a ladder which goes from 3 to 54. So if I get a dice roll outcome of 2 when I'm at 1, I would actually go to 54. And then I would go from 54 to 33. Okay. That's also not very confusing because there is a snake which takes me from 56 to 33. So if when I'm at 54, I need to get a dice roll outcome of 2, which will take me to 56, which is the same as going to 33. And then you can see that there's a ladder from 37 directly to vertex 100, which would be my final move. A couple of things to note that as I mentioned in my explanation is that Vertex 99 has only one possible move. Vertex 98 has two possible moves and so on. And similarly, Vertex 100 has no possible moves because once you reach Vertex 100, the game is finished. I hope my explanation so far made sense. Feel free to comment if you have any doubts. Thanks a lot for watching this video everyone. If you like this video, please hit the like button and if you like the content on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Keep practicing and happy coding.